So everybody in Facebook Live, hey, we're uh, getting ready to get started. So just bear with us for a second. Gabrielle, say hi to everybody in Facebook land. Hi, <laughs> Facebook family. <laughs> Thanks for listening today. <laughs> we are just working on uh, getting everything. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. And here we are. Hey, everybody. Nikki Burnett here. Taste Life Radio streaming live on KUHS Denver. Number three, I think still number three. I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, number one in the nation um, as far as internet <laughs> radio. So, um, this is a great spot to be, and I'm super excited about today, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm on fire. <laughs> I am fuming mad. So I'm going to do my best to um, speak coherently and, um, and not get too worked up <laughs> because this is, a, it's, this is all, it's an interesting and new situation. It's not new situation, but it just happened to me indirectly. Anyway, so um, we're going to get started. We're going to, I'm going to want to introduce you real quick to Gabrielle Grandel. Gabrielle is um, an amazing friend, colleague. Uh, she's a partner when I work with my clients and I just love her to death. And so um, I don't want you, I want you to talk, I want you to say hi and talk about um, what your, all of your acronyms mean. But then we got to get into gratitude because I'm feeling right now I need to be grateful because I'm on fire. <laughs> so I was just say hi to everybody and then let's talk about what we're grateful for. Sure, so thanks for having me. Um, my name's Gabrielle Grandel. I uh, am trained uh, as a dietitian. So I'm an integrated dietitian, but I've been practicing functional medicine um, since 2007, right around there. Um, so functional medicine, nutrition, uh, certified as a functional medicine health coach and national board certified health coach as well. And I have a um, certification as a lead therapist, which means that I help people with lifestyle, eating and performance, um, which is centered around food sensitivities. It means she's a smarty pants is what it means and why I love <laughs> to have her as my partner in crime. So all good stuff. Um, thanks, Thank Gabrielle. <laughs> so as always, we start with gratitude um, and what what. You know, this morning I was just running behind, and you know, part of it was you know this research that I was trying to do for the show, but then this other thing popped up. I'm like, whoa! And it fit in so well, but it just lit me up. And so, um, as we start and talk about gratitude, first I want you know I'm just grateful for people like Gabrielle. You know, and I've, I say this a lot. You know, it's the people who lift you up, who make you better, who um, are you know, really there as whether it's support or guidance or just as a friend or whatever. And so um, I'm grateful to you, Gabrielle, um, and grateful for all of your partnership. Um, we just have a really great, great uh, synchronicity. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to also say that I'm really grateful for this platform because this is a platform that allows me to to vent on a day like today and it's a it's something that we need to get out we need to talk about i don't know how often it's talked about but it's not talked about enough and um i'm grateful to be able to sit here and spew a little bit but then educate and and, and maybe make a few of you out there go wait a minute what is this that's happening? What's happening with our food and what's happening with our medical system? Okay, so that's um, that's what I'm grateful for. All right, Gabrielle, your turn. Oh, uh, so if I was going to condense it down. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it, it's hard when you really think about it because we do have so many blessings. Um, I would say that I'm really grateful to be here today with you, that I'm grateful to partner with you, um, that I'm very blessed to do this work that, that we do where we get to help empower people to live their happiest and healthiest life. Um, I really feel like it's important to share about um, medical and bodily autonomy and informed consent. And we get to do that in this, um, in this position. And I really feel honored um, and grateful to be able to do that and, and touch so many different lives, but also help myself and my health, you know, moving forward. 
and my, my loved ones and, and family and friends. Yeah. So thankful for all of the support out there <laughs> as well. Yeah. Oh, man. That's the great thing about this uh, community is, is the amazing amount of support that, um, that we have. So it's yeah. awesome. Um, one thing I'm going to ask real quick is when you talk, your computer shakes a little bit. <laughs> so oh, I don't know. I'm not okay. sure what it is, but um, right now it's totally still. Um, I'm just, okay. so just, just throwing that out there. But um, okay. one of the things that I don't do well enough, and Gabrielle is the one that pointed this out to me, is when we do talks like this, we really need to say that this is really for informational purposes. This is not medical advice. It's, you know, it's really, we want to talk about what we think is important in this in this world, what is truth, and that's really what it boils down to. We want to have fun. We want to. We would talk dogs, and we get a little crazy, and we want to do all the fun things. But you know, this is not medical advice. But it is truth to the best of our ability, right? It's truth um, in the way that we know it today. Science changes constantly, and so you know, we are here to dig through the minutia, dig through all of the the internet mumbo jumbo that is out there that's so confusing and people are like I don't know what's up and I don't know what's down when it comes to, to healthcare and to nutrition and so that's really what the goal of this show is and then what the goal of mine and Gabrielle's work is is just to help because we're all unique we're all individual we're not the same we can't you know we don't all eat the same foods even if it's blueberries right blueberries they're high in antioxidants they're the best thing in the world and although wonderful not everybody can do blueberries so um we 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 look at the individual and we want to guide and so that's what this is is just helping you helping to guide you and to help you guide yourselves through what's real and what's maybe fad or just downright fake and downright damaging, which is what we're going to talk about today in yeah. a bit. Um, but let's talk about, um, let's talk about you, Gabrielle. <laughs> so I want, I want everybody to know, you know, you know, the basics, you know, I start with, start this always because I think it's important to know where you come from, why you do what you do, what, why it's important to you. Um, and you know, what brought you here? Cause you have kind of a cool, little history that's brought you into functional medicine and I I think I think it's interesting. So let's start there. Sure. Okay. Thanks for that opportunity. Yep. So Texas born and raised. Um yay. always knew that <laughs> yay Texas. Um <laughs> and I always knew that I wanted to help people and I just wasn't really sure what capacity. Um I went to college, I took a nutrition course, I really fell in love with the science of it. I've always been interested in science and interested in food and the connection with the flavors of food and how they can taste and be so beautiful, but also what they can do for our body and the rewards that we can can reap and the benefits. And also, you know, um, they, they can be damaging potentially. And so it was really just fascinating and interesting to see, um, to learn about that connection. And so I got my degree as a, a dietitian from uh, Texas Women's University in Denton. And then I went on to, um, to work at Baylor University Medical Center doing clinical nutrition. Um, the, how I put myself through school, just to kind of back up just a little bit, um, is uh, in the food industry and in the restaurant industry and catering. And so I've had a lot of opportunity to work front of the house, back of the house, kitchen, um, again, catering big scale events and seeing all the kind of ins and outs when it comes to food. Um, so then I went on to, to do the clinical nutrition at, at Baylor, and that was really rewarding um, for a while until it kind of wasn't. So <laughs> there's so, so many people that I was trying to see every day, and it just seemed like, you know, what was really, when I started learning more about the connection of what we put in our body, um, what we put around us, and how it makes us feel, and how, how these symptoms will present, mm -hmm. um, it seemed really interesting that at the hospital, there was so much talk about surgery, and so much talk about medication, and not enough talk, in my opinion, about what people were putting in their mouth, and what their lifestyle was like. And so I started just looking for other things, and I came across functional medicine, and I thought, this is really what I want to do. This is really why I wanted to get into this, you know, in the first place. This is really actually making some, some difference because um, we're looking at what is causing these, these issues in people. And most of the time, it's what they're putting in their mouth and what they're putting around them. And so um, 
so I was really blessed to be able to partner with a, uh, a local MD, um, OB Jen, so a gynecologist who had her own private practice. And I worked with her and ran her office for a bit. And then I transitioned into doing uh, nutrition consultations with her. Um, and that then led to a much bigger um, collaborative center where we had lots of other uh, practitioners uh, on the team. And as I was with her, she would take me to these different functional medicine conferences. And I had the opportunity to uh, meet with the ladies who were starting the Functional Medicine Coaching Academy back, uh, I guess it's been, what, maybe four years ago, five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so they were starting and they had an opportunity to come in as a beta student and kind of test out their program. So I joined as a beta student. I then um, was asked to, uh, to teach for them and help as kind of adjunct faculty. So I did that for a couple of years, teaching different clinicians and different providers um, how to hold that space for people. So I, what I learned is that, you know, it's, it's one thing to talk about the biochemistry of nutrition and what's going on in, in people's bodies and kind of help them understand, you know, and connect the dots. Um, but it's a different thing to then say, okay, here's your protocol that I want you to do. Now, how do you do it? So the coaching comes in and, and helps, helps the people to actually do those things you know, and, um, and keep them accountable and encouraged. So that's what I learned through that program. And I thought it was very valuable. And then I went on to become national board certified because I really feel like health, uh, health and wellness coaching is really gonna blow up, um, especially in this field because so many functional medicine providers, you know, could really benefit from having a coach on their team to again, help those people to, to do the things they need to do and really take that time with them. Um, and so, so I was one of the first national board um, certified health coaches in the country, which I'm pretty proud of. Um, you should be. And yeah, that's pretty cool. And then the certified lead therapist um, portion kind of came in, in somewhere in the middle of that where I wanted to learn more about food sensitivity testing and how to be really targeted with that. Um, so I took that certification. And so now I see people at Living Well Dallas, which is a functional medicine center in Dallas, Texas. And I do nutrition consultations um, individually. I also do group consultations. And when we can get things back up and going, I was doing more workshops in person. Um, so I'd love to get back to that. Uh, but that's kind of where I am now. And so I kind of take all the, all those pieces together, um, the coaching and, you know, interpreting labs and talking about supplements and biochemistry and roll that into one. Um, and I've had the opportunity to work with Nikki over the last, I guess, couple of years now. Yeah. yeah. Helping, helping as, as, uh, in that coach role for her, for her people. And yeah. It's been a really, um, really awesome partnership. Yeah, it's a great par partnership. It's one where I know where my strength, my strengths and my weaknesses are, um, and and Gabrielle has given me the ability to, well, she she helps with my weaknesses, right? She having that coaching experience and that coaching knowledge, you know, I can be you know motivational and you know go go, but you you're really able to get into the mind and the day to day work that people have to do. Um, and help give them guidance in, you know, you know, that mental and emotional capacity and, you know, what it, what it's like day to day and all of these, as well as, you know, you've got the labs and the biochemistry and the supplements. So it's, it's, uh, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to do, there are things that I don't have to do because she can do it better than I can. <laughs> so, and that's why it's a great partnership. And I think also if you know if I have a complicated case, which seems to be just the way that it it, it is, there's lots of complicated cases out there. Um, we brainstorm, you know, we have we we talk and we talk through things, and she's helped me a couple of times. If I'm like, this just doesn't make sense to me, what do you think? Um, and mm -hmm. so you're you know talking through it is is really really helpful, really valuable, um, yeah. and it's part of being you know a practitioner and a clinician is is you know. You, we, we don't know everything and we gotta we gotta work through we gotta work through it so that's right taking taking the ego out of it and just knowing that you know two heads are better than one yeah. and we all bring something different to the table yeah absolutely so I have a question for you um, I'm curious mm -hmm. your training in dietetics and then moving over to functional medicine mm -hmm. um, 
what do you what are the key differences that you see yeah that's a good question um you know one of the first thing that comes to my mind is really time time spent yeah. with those people so you know because in the hospital which was my main um, experience in that was very short you know it was 15 minutes maybe 20 minutes tops um, because we had so many people to see at different ends of the hospital so time spent with people to really understand their background their history what their challenges are where they really shine you know what their where their strengths are i think that's really imperative and i think that's a big difference um i think some other differences would be again just not following um you know the the model that's been given to us from the, the dietetic uh, industry and you know so for a while we were following the food guide pyramid and then now we have the, the my plate you know uh, nutritional guides yeah and just understanding that none of that stuff is personalized or individualized um and it doesn't work for everybody sorry about that i realized i made the computer shake again it's okay um <laughs> So, you know, I, I think it's just a, a more personalized approach, um, looking at it through this angle. Um, and I think also, you know, more uh, evidence based because there's more research and there's more science and we're always kind of paying attention to that and trying to learn more and grow. Whereas in um, the other kind of environment or arena, I, I couldn't really say that um, as much. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think, um, and, and, and this is what I think to be the case, um, but, you know, dietetics is more allopathically based, so your traditional medicine, um, whereas, you know, I would say nutritionists and, you know, functional medicine, well, it's not allopathic, it's just, it's sort of its own world, um, but it's not about, it's not about covering up symptoms, it's really about digging to the root cause, which is why, you know, you say, you know, we spend so much time with clients because we are trying to dig. We're trying to understand why it's going on. And I was talking with um, some friends last night, you know, and this is part of my story to come up. But um, there, when there are certain situations and you, they say, okay, well, this is, this is what you have. This is, you have these food allergies or these food sensitivities or this disease. And you just go, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. and then you move on. You're like, okay, well, I'll take the drugs or whatever. Always, mm -hmm. always ask why. You know, we call ourselves detectives for a reason. We have to understand why, what the problem is, what's going on, what's creating it. If there's inflammation, why is there inflammation? If there's a microbial infection, why is there a microbial infection? If you've got leaky gut, why do you have leaky gut? If you've got diabetes, why do you have diabetes? And keep going and keep going and keep going and keep digging. Um, and so... It's, it's unfortunate that dietetics and allopathic medicine, you know, I don't even know if it's, I can't even blame the doctors. It's blaming the system, you know, because of the, the time and the insurance. And, you know, we have, a, we have amazing brains here and we have a great healthcare system, but there are definitely some things that are broken. And I would say mm -hmm. allopathic medicine is beautiful in acute care. Um, yeah. but where functional medicine shines and functional nutrition is more in chronic care. Which is most of what we're dealing with. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, just, oh, go ahead. Just to, just to add yeah. to that, the, you know, um, this kind of, uh, well, just to add to it, just the other thing that I noticed, um, that I didn't notice as much, you kind of touched on it is the influence of big agriculture, big pharma, yeah. you know, big food yeah. on what we were taught and trained as dietitians. Um, and that's not the case as much in functional nutrition. I mean, we're all bombarded, you know, by, by this um, on lots of levels, but, yeah. um, you know, again, I paid a lot of money, you know, to go to college to learn this kind of paradigm um, and now that I'm not practicing that way anymore, I've had to sort of unlearn some of the things that, that I've learned. Yeah. Um, that's so interesting. And realized who was really pulling the, a lot of the strings. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and mm -hmm. we're going to dig into that a little bit. That was, um, originally, you know, what the show was, you know, it's about, 
the truth and it's about you know your choices and your health and and your ability to to be self-reliant um, and to educate yourself um, or find the people who can help you you know nobody's expected to know everything about everything I hate bookie bookkeeping and I hate numbers so I give it away but I give it away to people who know <laughs> what they're doing so um, and marketing marketing kills me um, so I give it away but um, you know we want to we want to bring you um, again truth surrounding healthcare, surrounding the medical system, surrounding the man manipulation of our food, of data. So much that's going on. But first, before we get into it, I gotta take a quick break um, and talk about a company called Rightful. Have you heard of Rightful yet, Gabrielle? Okay, okay. So um, they are. Uh, I can't remember the name of the doctor right now. Oh, actually, I just can't say her name very well. But she is a physician who uh, who created this, and I believe she created it with a couple other people who I don't know. But I had heard of this doctor. But Rifle is a liquid supplement. It's uh, it's 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 intended for inflammatory conditions and for pain, right? So that's the key. Is it's for pain management. Um, and so there's a it's a really nice coconut based herbal supplement with turmeric and ashwagandha, which is beneficial for the, the adrenals, so it's kind of calming and focusing. Um, and it's got some, uh, is it passion flower? Now I can't remember, sorry. Um, but it, it helps with sleep. So that's why it's got a morning and an evening um, uh, formula. But you take it over time, the intent is to you know get you off of your meds, to not have to take the meds. And so there are pain clinics now who are uh, using Rightful because it's such a great product and is working so well for people who have chronic pain. So um, I love it. I think it's a great product. I don't have chronic pain, but I do have focus issues sometimes. And so it really helps me with, uh, with focus. And I've noticed a, a, a pretty significant difference. Um, I think I've said this multiple times that I, that's my thing right now is I'm working on my brain. And so all of these things I'm doing to, to help my brain work better. And uh, it's fun to know you're sort of on top of your game, at least getting there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that helps everything. Yeah, it does, it does. Um, so you can go to rightful.com and you can put in the code TLN, as in Taste Life Nutrition, TLN20, um, and you can get a discount and you can get started. So. Um, don't expect to have total pain relief within a month. It's one of those things that you've got to continue for a bit, but um, it's a really, really nice product. So check it out. Um, they're a good company. I'm, uh, I'm a big supporter of people who are in companies who really are, are working to do the right thing, um, and I believe that this is a good company. So, um, all right. So maybe I'll should try it, or you should try it over at, yeah. down in Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get down yeah. there soon anyway. It's been way too long. <laughs> I know. Come and, come and visit and play. I know, I know. Okay, so here's where we're going to talk about what my what has happened. Um, this the story that I have, and so this was not planned. You know what we wanted to talk about all of these things surrounding food and medicine, and you know the goods and the bads, but the things to be aware of, and knowing that you, you know you have the control. You know you you, you know it just takes. It, and it takes some effort to be educated, right? And to know where to find the right information. But that's, again, why we do what we do, is we wanna help you get through that stuff. But what happened was, I was with some friends who have um, an 11 year old son who um, has some pretty significant health issues. And so then, you know, the less significant, but tough as an 11 year old, he's got some pretty severe um, well, and it is serious. He does have one anaphylactic issue, uh, allergy, but he's got some pretty intense food sensitivities, uh, allergies, and then environmental allergies as well. And so he's got a team of doctors, lots of these things going on, but what he was, what mom and dad were told was because he has to eliminate so many foods that they gave him a supplemental drink to help him to get the nutrients that he needs. That's what they were told. And so they're like, okay, makes perfect sense. Why wouldn't we buy loads of this stuff and have him drink it? Um, because we, he's an 11 year old, he's gotta grow. He's gotta start producing hormones. He's gotta, all of these things must happen and he has to have the nutrients in order for it to happen, right? So it's understandable, why wouldn't they? 
I mean, and I, I, I see it, you see it all the time. I saw it um, when my father-in-law had cancer. They, there were the multitude of things that they were pushing that was food was gross. I mean, like, like just, I can't even believe that people think that this is food. So I hope that this is okay because I'm going to do it anyway. But this is the product, if you see it, that I was talking, that I'm talking about. So it's along the lines of um, Pedialyte, Pediasure, uh, Insure, right? So Insure for adults. Boost. Boost. Yeah, thank you. Um, and so I want to, I want to talk about the ingredients in this stuff. And 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 I'm I really, this could be like a three-hour show. And so I'm going to make it as <laughs> concise as I as I possibly can. And and Gabrielle, I want you to jump in anywhere that you you want to. Um, and. Sure. I'm just mad. I'm fuming mad. So this product, I looked at it. it the ingredients are not on the, the box. No ingredients on the box. I'm like, well, that's alarming in and of itself. So the first ingredient is maltodextrin. Maltodextrin is a sugar from corn, which is genetically modified. 85%, 85% of this is genetically modified sugar from corn, which is going to tax the liver. Um, ridiculously and so let me back up a second we are we're living in a society where we are inflamed and obese this is going to create more inflammation and more obesity same with overfed over nourished yes and that's that's yep. exactly what this is the second ingredient is sugar so we have sugar and then we have sugar then we have <laughs> makes sense to me right yeah uh, I, one of their reasonings for the maltodextrin is because the liver uses dextrin. So, but this is, this is not okay. Not okay. I, it's yeah, amazing to me. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, that, that, uh, like you said, it, it uses dextrin, but to what, to what degree and how yeah. much does it, yeah. does it inflame the liver? Right. Oh yeah. So, yeah. It's pure yeah. insanity. And the thing too is when you go to the websites and they're breaking down the nutrients and why the nutrients in, are in there, if you don't know, if you don't know what they're talking about, you'll be like, "That makes perfect sense. I get it." I mean, because that's what it said about the dextrin is like the liver uses dextrin for fuel or whatever it said. And I, just, in my mind, I'm just you know I'm sitting there on my computer this morning just exploding. I'm so angry that we're okay with the people are doing this to our children let alone our parents, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the next ingredient, 5% vegetable oil. What do vegetable oils do? Uh, they create inflammation, they're unstable, um, and they create obesity, they create heart disease. Um, how many other things can I say that vegetable oils do? All of the trash that we deal with today is because of sugar and bad oil. And then, you know, there's obviously lifestyle things, but um, it's, yeah, what else? Oh, then there's canola oil, which same, rancid, terrible, oxidate, it's, it, it creates oxidation. Um, Another GMO crop. Yep, yep, genetically modified. Right. What is, what's the, the sugars, the sugar's probably from beet sugar too. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the maltodextrin from corn, which is um, genetically modified. Sugar, if it says sugar and not cane sugar, almost always it's gonna be from genetically modified beet sugar. Mm -hmm. Sugar beets. I mean, seriously. So mm -hmm. then we move in, and so they've got some amino acids. And so you, I get the amino acids. If he can't eat meat, he needs the amino acids, but he can eat meat. So fine. Then we get into things like um, their synthetic nutrients they're putting in here. So DL-alpha-tocopherol is a synthetic form of vitamin E. You know that because of the L that's in there. I also know that that L that's in there is what create it, it, it has the potential for creating heart disease, um, and it was shown in studies, which is really sad. This is a whole other story. Oh, man, I could just go on for days. So, but I think it's important. So, DL alpha tocopherol. There was a study done. It was however many years ago, 15, 20 years ago, whatever it was, on if vitamin E was important for the heart. And so what it found was that this vitamin E was actually creating more heart attacks or events. I'm not sure what it was. I'm not doing a great job with the study. But it showed that vitamin E was not good for cardiovascular health. But what they were doing was they were using the synthetic form of vitamin E. <laughs> and so...
and so yeah, it was damaging and it created a lot, a whole host of problems. So um, synthetic nutrients, you, they don't make sense in the body. It does, they don't make sense to the body. The body is just like, what? I don't know what to do with this. Okay. Um, then they've got a bunch of other nutrients. Um, then they have cyanocobalamin so, and folic acid. Folic acid is a, a, a synthetic form of folate. If you're out there and you're pregnant, do not take folic acid. Take folate. Difference. Big difference. Um, cyanocobalamin is a synthetic form of B12. Um, the B12, the interesting thing about B12 is we always take it, we think about it for energy. Um, you know, it goes, it, 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 it supports our mitochondria, which are our little energy uh, manufacturers, right? So the cyanide molecule that's attached to the cobalamin actually shuts down the electron transport chain, which is our energy producer within the mitochondria. So it literally makes no sense. <laughs> Anything so you want to add. Yeah. It's just cheap for them. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks good. Yeah. There's a whole, yeah. I can show you, I don't know if it really is helpful to show you, but the, the you know, the list of ingredients here, um, and it looks great. You're like, it's got all of these nutrients in it and I'm supporting my kiddo and I'm being helpful. And this is the most damaging inflammatory stuff that you can give to your kiddo. And it just makes me crazy. Um, so is looking, are the amino acids, does it say where they're from? Are they a, a cow base or are they, where are they? No, does it, say? it doesn't say you anything. You have to dig for that. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that, um, they're not what we need. Yeah. Forthright. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, something tells me. <laughs> so I decided yeah. to start looking a little bit deeper and I'm going to, I promise I'm going to let you talk here in a minute. <laughs> No, you're good. This is important for people to know. Yeah, thank you. Um, I agree. And so I was looking at like Pediasure. So Pediasure and Pedialyte. So Pediasure, basically, uh, same thing. You can kind of, so I would say Pediasure and then Insure, right? Pediasure for kiddos, Insure for adults. Same thing, all very similar stuff. All sugar, uh, milk, vegetable oils, soy oil, genetically modified. Um, and then a bunch of trash nutrients. It also contains, they both also contain what's called carrageenan. Carrageenan is a seaweed, but it's known to create GI distress and is potentially carcinogenic. It's a thickener, and so they put it in there. It's not okay. This isn't something that you wanna have in your food. They have, you see it in ice creams and all kinds of stuff, so just mm -hmm. something to be aware of. Still all the synthetic nutrients, very similar. Then I started looking at the Pedialyte. And we're giving our kids, we, you know, it's electrolytes, right? And we're trying to support them and give them what they need and give them focus, right? They're in school and they need focus. One of the, there are a couple of Pedialytes that I looked at and they had, I would think I'm going to read these. I'm just going to read them. So they had red number 40. Um, let's see, red number 40, blue number one, and yellow number six. So red number 40 found in many foods to alter color. All modern food dyes uh, are derived from Pertol... Petroleum, a carcinogen that is linked to cancer in some studies, also can cause hyperactivity in children, banned in, banned in European countries, worst offender. So That's what I was just going to say. You give it to them for focus, but it actually makes them, yeah. you know, not be able to focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's insanity. Uh, then blue number one, used in bakery products, candy, soft drinks, can damage chromosomes and lead to cancer. Yellow number six, a carcinogen used in sausage, beverages, and baked goods thought to cause kidney tumors according to some studies. And this is what these companies are saying is healthy for our kids. And we're like, okay, I believe you because you're a professional and I go to you for good advice. Yeah, so, surely you wouldn't be putting out a product that would harm me in any way. Right, right. People, surely it's people, not just about making money for your company. Yeah, people care about people, right? People, people want to do the right things for other people. I mean, that's and they what do. we assume. There are people who well, really do. There are uh, uh, the yeah. bulk of the food industry, right? <laughs> <laughs> Man. So what, the one last story that I have, um, because these are two personal stories, and I, I, I just can't get over it. I think that that's, that's why. Yeah. So when I graduated nutrition school, um, 
I somebody. My background is actually in the medical world. I sold surgical devices and pharmaceuticals and did the whole thing for quite a few years. And so I had that on my resume. And so I was uh, a company reached out to me and said, you know, we like what you have to offer because I have the experience in both, right? So um, we want you to interview for this um, company who is increasing or building their nutrition line and it's specifically selling to oncology i was like all right cool you know this you get a car you get all the stuff i'm like let's let's talk about it then i found out what it was and i looked at it and it was insure <laughs> they're taking insure with all of these terrible nutrients sugar a lot of cancers not all a lot of cancers feed off of sugar um but creating more inflammation creating problems they're selling it into hospitals and telling them that this is healthy for their patients. Mm -hmm. We're trying to save these people and we're giving them straight inflammation and, and, um, and beating down their body and their mitochondria and their genetics. I mean, who does this? Lots of hospitals, I can tell you, right? Like, so in the, in the closet, um, I forget what it's called now, there was a little pantry area in the hospital on each floor where you could go to grab little snacks or, you know, little drinks or whatever. And that was all that there was in there was things like Ensure, Boost, you know, um, Jell-O, um, you know, just, I'm drawing blank crackers, just all yeah. the stuff that's not, you know, not helping anybody and only hurting, uh, only hurting people. I think, and they're not another up and they're, and they, it's challenging because they, um, a lot of hospitals won't allow you to bring in, you know, even if you had somebody knowledgeable that wanted to bring in something that was a better quality product for these people, it wasn't always, um, wasn't often allowed. Why? So, because they, it hadn't been studied or they didn't understand what it was going oh, to do. Or, you know, how, it might, how it might, um, how it might help or harm. And so they just wanted to go with what they, they knew was going to, to work. So I want to know how how these products in studies how they performed well. What what basis are they going off of that allows them to perform well? Well, I think that's a, a question when we think about all kinds of products um, and all kinds of things out there is is who's doing the study, right? And yeah. who who stands to profit? Mm -hmm. And so I think we always have to question that. Like maybe they performed well, but at what at what cost and what was there any kind of placebo? Was there any, what were the methodologies, you know, that were used yeah. um, in those, in those reports? I certainly didn't, you know, see, certainly didn't see anything like that um, that was showing that these were good quality, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's just, and there's also a lot of, um, you know, financial transactions that happen between hospitals and, um, and big food. And, of course, and of course, that, money. Right? Money, yeah. the most important thing in the world, right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I agree. It's pretty important. But, um, man, you know, the people who are handling it can, um, uh, because that's what it is. It's not the money. It's the people who are, who are trading the money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Money is a good thing. We need money. I'm not bashing money at all. But the people who don't, yeah, that's all that there is, is is just about the money and not about the people. And I just, I don't understand. I'll tell you that when um, I found out what it was that I was to be selling into the oncology department, I didn't do the interview. I considered, though, actually doing the interview and just going in and going, how in the <laughs> many explicitives is it possible for you to actually sell this product? And when I told the headhunter about it, she was like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so, like, and that's why they have to make that job look real shiny, yeah. you know, yeah. over here. Yeah. Um, Man. Willing to do that. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's just a good, another good point to kind of continue on the, the conversation of just yeah. um, manipulation of food and just hiding things. Like, for example, that drink that you were talking about, how challenging was it to find all the ingredients? Why are they not listed on the label mm -hmm. why are genetically modified you know foods not labeled right right why don't we know what's happening right you know and these have been in our food supply for over 20 years at this point right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. close 1994. so you know um if there's nothing to hide with these with these products 
then label them, then put the ingredients right. everywhere for everybody to be right. seen, you know, and, and that's not happening. And that I think should make us all question, you know, um, mm -hmm. what's really going on. Yeah. Right? Why, why, why does most of America want for genetically modified foods, you know, just as an example to be labeled, but yet they're still not labeled. Right. 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 So what are they, what are they hiding and, and what are they trying to, uh, what kind of agenda are they trying mm -hmm. to push? Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think where Nikki and I come in is we just want you to know both sides. We just want you to know all the ins and outs mm -hmm. of, about this as much as we, we know and we can share um, so that everybody can make an informed decision. But where we get really upset is all of this, um, this sabotage and all of this like hiding information and, you know, um, just not being uh, forthcoming and, and honest and open with, with what's really going on and that there may be some downsides like there's downsides to medication there's downsides mm -hmm. to surgeries and sometimes we're told about those things and we still make the choice or we need to go ahead and move forward with it there may be a downside to a food or a supplement but it may still be the best choice for us but we still i, I still would like for everybody to know both sides and not have all this um, hidden information yeah we we need to have the information so we can make the best choices we don't yeah. need to depend on others to make the choices for us. We Thank have you. the ability to make our own decisions. Um, mm -hmm. And it's frustrating when there are those who believe that we don't. The little people can't take care of themselves and can't decide. Um, right. And it infuriates me. Um, I have to, I have to, to gosh, my words. I have to take a quick break um, and then we're gonna keep, keep going with the conversation. Um, for one, this amazing radio station, KUHS Denver streaming live, they, uh, they're rocking it. Henry's amazing, sitting in the background doing his thing. Um, so thanks to Henry um, and thanks to the stations. Good stuff. And then also um, our last sponsor, Zymogen. Great company. I know you know Zymogen. Um, yeah. Use them a ton. They uh, they're a rock star company, and they don't put stuff out there that is not beneficial to you, to us. Um, they are uh, super careful, and they've got everything that you can imagine really. They've got some um, medical foods, they've got you know organ system support, they've got brain support. Um, a couple of my favorites are cognitive support for me to help, again, to help me focus. So there's it's a ATP Ignite Workout and their Keto, now I don't remember what it's called, Keto something, but it's um, both of those have given me a lot of brain capacity, which is super nice. fun. <laughs> yeah, I really, I do it every morning. Um, I do it instead of coffee. And it really is good stuff. So Zymogen's a great company. You can go to my website. Uh, you can go to, I think it's the bottom of the first page, and it just says it says Whole Scripts actually because that's their ordering platform. Um, and you can put in Radio Five, and you can get a discount. Uh, you, you take a look in there. Anything that you want. Obviously, though, I have to say, all supplements are not for everybody. So if you have a question, you, I, you know, you don't need to waste money on something that's not for you. That's that's part of it. But then. Supplements have the ability to, for, for the wrong people, to cause harm, right? They just can. So we want to be super aware of what we're taking, why we're taking it. Um, and so, you know, talk to somebody who knows, right? So, but there's some, there's some really good ones out there that, um, that I think that, that, uh, that are pretty, you know, even kill for most people, right? So, okay. Like vitamin C or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, okay. So let's keep going. I want to kind of hit on what we started to talk about, which would be, um, you know, a little bit of the self-reliance and the self-reliance and educating yourselves through the right people. I would like to think that we're the right people. <laughs> That's why we do this. But there's some of them. Yeah. Yeah. And, but there are, there are a lot of, there's a, there are a lot of gimmicks out there. Um, a lot of gimmicks, a lot of bad information, a lot of um, just misinformation. And so relying on ourselves, our intuition, which is strong, um, and, 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 and being accountable and advocating for yourself. All these things build confidence. I'm, I mean, I have much more confidence, you know, when I have issues or if I'm dealing with people um, and then advocating for certain things because of the knowledge that I have. And if the more knowledge that you have, 
the more self-reliant, the more confident uh, you're going to be. And so um, I think that, I think it's really, it's just really important to understand that not everybody's on your side, <laughs> which is sad. <laughs> That's true. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to partner with people that, that do have your, your interest in mind, but yeah. ultimately you are in charge. You know, we're all mm -hmm. in charge of our own life and our own health. It's not the government's responsibility or the doctor's responsibility or anybody else's responsibility, but, but our own. Um, mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of power in that, right? Yeah. A lot of freedom in that. There's a lot of, mm -hmm. of choice, um, and we all we always just want to remind you that the choices that you make are so powerful, um, all of them, and and uh, and I think we've said this before too. You know, just that health is not not black and white. You know, so a lot of people are fearful that they're not going to make the right choice, or that if they don't, you know, um, do all the steps of their plan, that they're going to, to fail. But, but the truth is that every step that you take towards health that serves your body is, is a good step and is going to help you get where you, you want to go. Um, and we just wanted to encourage everyone out here that uh, they in, intuitively, you know a lot. You're the best expert of you. And um, while there are people that have gone to school or do, done different education or different kinds of, of programs to, to learn what they, what they know, they're still not the best expert of you. Um, you are. And, and they can help guide and they can help partner with you um, and use their expertise, but never be afraid to ask questions about why someone's recommending something to you or um, or dig a little bit deeper when there's some sort of uh, mandate that happens. You know, try to understand what yeah. what that's about. And um, and again, asking questions and empowering yourself um, is really is really helpful and really makes you feel um, feel better about the situation and, and feel more in, in control because you really are do really have a lot of control. Yeah, you know, and one of the things that, that you have said a couple of times, uh, and so if you don't know, we do a, a monthly Facebook Live together, so join us. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. called Functional Friday, first Friday of the month. Um, but, you know, these are the things that we talk about. And one of the things that you have said um, on, on numerous occasions is that our body is divinely made. Um, mm -hmm. And I love that. I just think that's one of the most beautiful things. And it, But it's true. Our body has so much sense and so much common sense. And what has happened is we kind of let our brains get in the way um, and our th we think too much or we don't think enough or we let somebody else think for us. Um, and what happens, you know, we start to feel anxieties, uh, pain, brain fog, fatigue, whatever these things might be, we, we look for a quick fix. Instead of going, instead of, you know, what's happening is you got to listen, right? You got to listen. Your body's knocking on the door going, hey, something's up. Something's up. Yeah. Something's up. I'm trying to get your attention because something's happening and you need to you need to take care of it. And so these symptoms that we experience are just that. It's not it's not just random stuff. You know, the body is so beautiful. Um but we have to learn again how to pay attention and and, and start to understand the body and take accountability and, and think, what is it that I am doing or what is it that I need to do to make it stop talking to me the way that it's talking to me. Because it talks to us every day, right? We just have to, mm -hmm. to listen. But when when there's pain or there's there are symptoms, that's when it's kind of yelling at you. It's like, okay, I met my I met my point and it's just not good. It's not gonna get better if you don't do something about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. It's never fighting against you. You know, a lot of clients mm -hmm. and patients come in and, and think, well gosh, you know, what's I, I feel like I'm doing all these things right and yet I still have this, you know, rash or I still have this headache or something. It's, it's, it's like you said, Nikki, it's a, it's a messenger. It's a beautiful messenger just to, to say, well, maybe look a little deeper, yeah. you know, um, because we are, we're, we're here to do good work in the world. And I think we are uniquely and perfectly created. We just have to keep giving the body what it needs, figure out what that is. And, and, you know, the whole idea of functional medicine and get rid of, of what it doesn't. And then it really, you know, works beautifully for us most of the time. Yeah. And that's on other levels outside of just our food and our exercise and our, 
our sleeve. That's our community. That's our relationships. That's our purpose. That's all, all those things, you know, that, that make up a, a healthy person. But, but yeah, we weren't, we weren't created with a deficit, right? Right. We were, we were created really, really beautifully. We're also not created or we don't end up, we don't end up with, um, drug deficiencies. <laughs> Yeah, that's where I was hoping you might go with that. Um, yeah. Because, right, you know, think about that theory that a lot of us are, are told or a lot of society is told. It's like, you know, you have depression. Well, ever since they started marketing on television, you know, however many years ago that was, and that yeah. doesn't even happen. So there's some countries they don't even allow that to, to happen. Yeah. But, but now, you know, the commercials are like, you have depression because you are tired at the end of the day, or you know you have depression because somebody passed away or something, you know. And like, so Duh. what you need to do is you need to take Prozac, right? And so tell your doctor that you you know see if Prozac is right for you. But really, like, you know, so emboldening you know people to to just think that that's the right answer. But we we didn't get there because we didn't have enough Prozac. You know, we weren't we weren't born with Prozac in our system, and then we lost it. You know, over the years, and it became deficient, and now we're depressed. So that's the answer, right? It's it's figure out where does that depression come from, and that could be many different things, right? It could be a um, you know, improper gut health. It could be not enough protein. It could be again, you had a, a bad breakup. You know, it could be a lot of different things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, but but that's kind of the model is like something's broken. You know, quote unquote. Right. We. The pill is what will fix it um, because mm -hmm. that's because we need that because that the, the brokenness is coming from not enough of this thing over here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and if that doesn't work long enough, then we'll just cut it out, you know, yeah. depending on what it is. Right. Um, and I know that sounds really aggressive and harsh and not all, you know, medical models are that way or practitioners are that way, but it seems to be a common kind of theme. Yeah. That we, yeah, it's true. You know, um, drugs are there for a reason. I mean, we are not anti-drug. Mm -hmm. We're not right. anti, you know, medicine. Uh, it's, yes, it's, let's make that really clear because mm -hmm. I know some people assume that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we totally believe. I know um, in practice if I see somebody with some kind of infection that is that is not uh, that we can't get rid of due, you know, with, you know, natural antimicrobials, I'm like, this might be your time to go get an antibiotic and then we're going to just load mm -hmm. you up with probiotics. You know, that's kind of simplistic, but it's true. I even have, I have a couple of clients who are um, really, really complicated. Well, and you see them too, or you see one of them, um, but super complicated. And there are certain drugs that I've suggested to her to help her get through. Um, and sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes yeah. it's important and that's okay. And these are pretty safe drugs um, and have, have you know, old and have shown um, a lot of good, you know, clinical evidence to be, to be beneficial in, in these situations. But, um, you know, drugs have a place, absolutely. Um, but they are overprescribed. We have a big problem with mm -hmm. them and they're too expensive. <laughs> um, and I get mm -hmm. R&D. There are things, man, we could just go down a rabbit hole. I'm going to stop. But um, <laughs> go ahead. You're going to say something. I just wanted to point out, I, you know, when I was talking about depression, I used that as the example. Yeah. You know, I, I do think and I do work with a lot of people that are on different kinds of, um, you know, psychiatric medications and things like that. And I think I just wanted to echo to your point that that there are sometimes, you know, a, a, a need for it. And it's not the, the worst um, scenario. You know, it can be a, a bridge while we're working on other right. things. Right. right. But but just the point to drive home is that that's not the ant that's not the reason, you know, why it, it happened. So it's not going to fix it. Right. Right. It's yeah. we, we're going to figure out what other things are going on that, that drove that. Yeah. You know, same thing for antibiotics. Like how many times are antibiotics given and no one even checked to see if it's a bacteria? Well, what if it's not a bacteria? Yeah. What if it's a virus yeah. or what if it's a yeast or something? Yeah. And then that bacteria or the antibiotics not going to even work. Yeah. You know, you know and, so. and at the same time, it, it, and it's true, it's like antibiotics are given for everything. Whether it works or not, they're just given for everything. But what, yeah. what we have seen also, which is tough because when a lot of times when, when patients go to see their doctor, they expect to leave with something. 
right? Mm. They expect to leave with something that's going to fix them. I'm in need of something that's going to fix me, and so I need you to send me something. And they're like, well, antibiotics are pretty safe here, you know, whether it works or not. And so, I mean, and they're not safe. Let me say that they certainly create a host of issues. Mm -hmm. Man, um, but, you know, we have to, again, go back to our innate ability to take care of ourselves, our innate ability for the body to heal itself, and, and the ability to to advocate for ourselves and not feel like somebody has to give us something in order for us to be healthy, that we can, we can, we can live a lifestyle to the best of our ability. We can avoid toxins, a lot of them, not all of them. We can, we can avoid unhealthy foods. We can avoid, you know, sugar. We can avoid, um, oil, uh, you know, unhealthy fats. We can avoid gluten. Yes. It's a topic that we're not going to get into right now, but gluten is inflammatory and it's a problem in most cases. Um, at least here in the United States um, and a few other places. So, um, you know, if we give the body what it needs to thrive, and that's what it's all about, right? We want to thrive. We don't know how long we're going to be here. We don't know how long we're going to be on this earth. Something can happen tomorrow. We all pray that it doesn't happen or as soon as we leave the station here. But we want to live, at least for me, and I assume that most people are this way, we want to live the best that we possibly can, as vitally and as vibrantly as we can while we're here right now. And if yeah. we're 99, I want to live vitally and vibrantly and I want to move and I want to eat good food and I want to have fun and drink a little wine um, and enjoy life and not be bedridden because I can't imagine being bedridden or even wheelchair ridden or, you know, the things that happen. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's what this life is all about. It's about getting better and being better and feeling good and enjoying and, you know, getting through the hard stuff because there is always hard stuff as well yeah and if you just kind of tap back in to what you were saying your your own innate power your own intuition um you are strong and able and capable and if you're struggling a little bit there are answers you know there are ways to help yourself to feel the best that you can and, it, and it's certainly not by relying on um, the medical establishment or the government or any other entity to hand you your health. You have to mm -hmm. take charge of it. Yeah. You have to read the ingredients. You have to ask the questions. And again, not to seem overwhelming because it doesn't all have to happen at once. You don't have to do this 180 where all of a sudden you're, you know, completely different person to see results and to see success. Um, but you do have to take ownership. And, and responsibility because like you said, Nikki, you know, no one's, they're not coming to save you and they're not really out for your interests. Some companies are, of course, sure. yeah. but the, the big conglomerates, that's not what it's about. And so we have to do a little deeper dive and really, um, and really be adamant about understanding and, and, and getting involved and, um, and getting involved in our health because our body really is beautiful. And like you said, really does want to, um, want to thrive and want to want to show up in the world and and really be vital and we absolutely all have that, that ability yeah yeah thank you for that um you know seek the truth that's what uh, keeps coming up to me and i it was it was really fun at the beginning of the year i don't know if i've said this before but at the beginning of the year um i was given this silly little bracelet and it says you know type your word of the year on it and i was just starting this show and in the, the word truth is just what kept coming to me um, and really kind of what I have wrapped around this show to the best of my ability and I still have it on It looks awful, but I still have my little bracelet and it says truth it. And so that's really what it is, you know seek the truth um, And 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 it's out there uh, in in multiple places, but we just have to be You know discriminating about where we find our truth because sometimes it's not truth <laughs> Mm -hmm. I want, on that note, I want to just give a couple of sites to look at um, so you can gather some more information. Yeah. Um, anybody that's listening, responsibletechnology.org is a great website for all information about GMOs. Um, so is the non GMO project.org. So you can find a um, you know, list of high risk crops and just educate yourself more about that. Um, and also the Organic Consumers Association when it just when it comes to food oh and the environmental working group yeah. is another um, really great uh nonprofit coalition much more interested in my opinion in our well-being than the environmental protection agency yeah oh, so absolutely. i would follow the, yeah. the ewg.org they have lots of uh, just a wealth of references um 
So yeah. So and the great and then, thing. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, and then the fun, ifm.org, you know, has yeah. great information. Yeah, too, IFM's great. So IFM's Institute for Functional Medicine. Um, good stuff. So the great thing, um, I kind of want to hit on EWG a second because they're super user friendly, um, and I, I just, I love putting in. So you can put in a whole product, or you can put in ingredients from the product. So when I'm searching, when I'm doing a search, I put in EWG and whatever that product or ingredient is, and it goes straight to it, and it gives it a rating. It tells you why it's good or why it's bad. It's really user friendly and will give you lots of information. And so the things that, and we're running over a bit, so I need to, to wrap it up, but the things that we need to pay attention to, not just food, but what we're putting on our body, right? What we're putting on our body is just as, as important as what we're putting in our body, what we're putting in our environment, what we're cleaning with, what we're washing our clothes with, what we're putting in our gardens. You know, we have kids who are crawling around and dogs who are crawling around and we put go and we put Roundup down, which is exceedingly toxic and now proven, we all knew it, to be a carcinogen. So Roundup, glyphosate, same thing. But there are many other, you know, glyphosate's been picked on and it should be, but there are many, many other toxins out there that are, that are beating our bodies down um, and we're just allowing it to happen. So um, anyway, so think about those things, really pay attention um, and just get rid of the chemicals. It's not worth it. It's really not worth it. Um, okay, so quickly, Gabrielle, where can you be found besides with me? <laughs> <laughs> so all, all the social media platforms, including YouTube, Gabrielle Grandel, um, you can call the office at 972-930-0260 or Gabrielle at livingwelldallas.com. That's G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And then the website is livingwelldallas.com. Yeah, so good group. Um, I've been involved with them, uh, I guess not as much now, except for with you. But, you know, the, mm -hmm. the company is a great company. Um, they do amazing work. So if you're in Dallas, you should go to Living Well Dallas. Um, yeah, and so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for me, tastelifenutrition.com. Um, you can get find me at Nikki at tastelifenutrition.com or 303-929-8926 here in Colorado. I do see clients all over the country, um, and so uh, you can go to my website, you can uh, take a free assessment, I'll reach out to you personally, we can chat about what's going on with you and see if there's a reason for us to move forward with any kind of consultations and that kind of thing. So, um, and then of course okay. all over the social media, yeah. And I also just wanted to interject that I also do that too, yeah. um, just so you guys know that there's free 15, 20 minute phone consultations available to see if it's a good fit. And I work with folks across the, the country too, like some people there in Colorado. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> she works with a lot of my clients. Yay. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody. Thanks for um, putting up with the rant. I appreciate it. And uh, there will be more to come, I'm sure. <laughs> But it's fun to talk about. It. It's fun to get the information out there. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. See y'all. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Gabrielle. Thanks, Nikki.